So today we are going over our study guide for our unit two assessment. Um, number one says select all fractions that are equivalent to three twelfths. So who can raise their hand and tell me a way that we've learned to tell if two fractions are equivalent? Dexter? Cross multiply. Yes. All right. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to cross multiply each one of these fractions to 3 twelfths. Okay? So to start with, we have the fraction 1 fourth, right? Mm -hmm. And we need to cross multiply that with 3 twelfths. Um, what is 4 times 3, everybody? 12. 12. Mm -hmm. And then 1 times 12? 12. 12. 12. Since 12 equals 12, that tells you 1 fourth is equivalent to 3 twelfths, okay? And so we're going to circle 1 fourth because that one is equivalent. Um, Dexter, at the top of your study guide, make a little tally mark because you'll get one dojo point after we're finished. That's something else I forgot to tell you guys is you'll keep track of your dojo points um, at the top of your paper on tally marks so that you can do those when you're done. So you're not getting up in the middle of the video, okay? All right, two eighths. And we're comparing these to what fraction? Three twelfths. So we've got two eighths and three twelfths. Eight times three is what? 24. And 12 times two? 24. 24. So we've got another one, right? Two eighths is also equivalent to three twelfths. Now we're going to check two elevenths. Two elevenths and three twelfths. Okay, eleven times three? Thirty-three. And twelve times two? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Since those are not equivalent, we two elevenths is not equivalent to three twelfths. <coughs> Bless you. Um, next we have four over one and we're checking that with three twelfths. Do we really need to do cross multiplying on this one or is there something just looking at this that you know immediately they're not equivalent? Caitlin? Um, you can tell that um, one over four is four big, over one. Yeah, four over one is bigger because um, it has a one at the bottom. The and bigger it, numbers yeah. up here, right? Yeah. So you know that on this fraction are bigger numbers on top, right? Mm -hmm. This fraction are bigger numbers on bottom. So we know for sure this guy's bigger, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't even have to do cross multiplying on that one. We can just rule it out. And the last one is 5 over 20, and we are comparing that to 3 twelfths. So 3 times 20? 60. 60, okay. And 12 times 5? 60. 60, so 5 over 20 is equivalent to 3 twelfths. And now... <clears throat> Out of those fractions that are equivalent to 3 twelfths, the smallest numerator is 1, right? Mm -hmm. So watch this. If we count by 1's on top and 4's on the bottom, um, what if we double 1, what do we get? 2. two. And if we double 4? 8. Eight. Eight. And if we double 2 again? <coughs> Six. Two. Oh, actually, hang on. Never mind. So three twelfths, if we, uh, we're counting by ones on top and fours on bottom. So one, two, three, four, eight, twelve. Uh, what's next after three when we're counting? Four. four. And then if we're going by multiples of four, four, eight, twelve, sixteen. 16. 16. What goes on top next? <coughs> Five. Five. And on the bottom? 20. 20. So look, all of those are equivalent. So 1 fourth, 2 eighths, 3 twelfths, 4 sixteenths, and 5 twentieths. 
Okay, so the only one they didn't put in our list, um, if we're going in order, is 4 15. Okay, next it says select all the fractions that are greater than half but less than one whole. So we've got five fractions here that we need to look at. We're looking for fractions that are greater than one half and that are less than one whole. So if we put a fraction here, it's greater than one half. If we put a fraction here, it's less than one whole. So we're gonna take each fraction individually and see if it meets both of those criteria. Is it greater than half? Is it less than a whole? Well, first of all, the less than a whole thing is easy. Is four out of five less than one whole? Yes. Yes, yes because how many fifths are there in a whole? Five. Five. So we know for sure this meets the, this criteria, right? Four fifths is less than one whole. Now let's see if it's greater than half. You can cross multiply to see if it's greater than half, but you can also draw a picture. And think about for a second, um, this has got one, two, three, four, five equal parts, right? Mm -hmm. And if we shade in four of those, tell me, have I shaded in more than half of that picture? Mm -hmm. I have, right? Mm -hmm. So four fifths is also greater than half. So it meets both of our criteria, so we're going to circle it. Okay, on the next one, we are looking at one third. So we've got some, since we've got one third and one half, they both have a one on top, right? Yes. So that means we're going to compare the size of the parts. So we've got one third and one half. Is one third bigger than one half? No. 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 So it, it doesn't meet the first criteria. So one third is out. Because one third is less than one half. All right. On the next one, we have five fourths. <coughs> that one's automatically out for another reason. Can anybody tell me, Olivia? Very good. Nice job, Olivia. So give yourself a little smiley <coughs> mark. And five fourths is out because five fourths is greater than one whole, right? <coughs> we want less than one whole. Okay, four sevenths. For four sevenths, let's think about seven for a second. Let's see what half of seven is. So I'm going to draw seven. Seven cookies, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to split these exactly evenly between Kelby and Chip. Okay? And guess what? If Chevy eats more of them, Kelby's going to be mad. At. And if Kelby eats more, Chevy's going to be mad. Right? Okay. <clears throat> So C for Chevy, K for Kelby. Chevy gets one. Kelby gets one. Chevy gets two. Kelby gets two. Chevy gets three. Kelby gets three. Um, in order to make it fair, we have to split them right down the middle, right? Mm -hmm. And so that means half of seven is three holes and one half, right? Three and a half is exactly half of seven. So if one of them eats four, that means they ate more than half, right? Mm -hmm. So four sevenths is greater than half, right? Mm -hmm. So would this be true then? Four sevenths is greater than half? Yeah. yeah. Is four sevenths also less than one whole? Yes. yes. So we can circle 
four sevenths. It meets both of our criteria. <clears throat> and last is five tenths. So what is half of ten? Five. Five. So that means that five tenths equals one half. So we could not put five tenths in here, so five tenths is out, okay? Because five tenths is equal to one half. Okay, you guys get that written down? Okay, um, the next one that we're gonna do is which fraction is less than three fifths? So we're going to compare each of these fractions to three-fifths by cross-multiplying, okay? So we've got five-sevenths and three-fifths. We've got four-sixths and three-fifths. We've got nine-fifteenths and three-fifths and seven-twelfths and three-fifths. And I know you don't have a whole lot of room to write on there. Um, but I am sending you with an answer key, so you'll have that as well. Um, okay, so if we cross multiply here, and I think for the benefit of anybody watching the video, I'm going to do them up here too. So what is 7 times 3? 21. 21. And 5 times 5? 25. 25. So that means 25 is greater than 21. So five sevenths is greater than three fifths, correct? Okay, so we're looking for a fraction that is less than three fifths. So that means one that's gonna be like this. It's gonna be this fraction, whatever it is, is less than three fifths. But um, it's open, it's a greater than symbol, so that five sevenths is out. So five sevenths is out because when we cross multiply, we get 21 and 25. So five sevenths is greater than three fifths. Okay, next we have four sixths and three fifths. So six times three, 18. 18. 5 times 20, 4, 20. 20. 20 is greater than 18, so 4 6 is greater than 3 fifths. So, Ariana, will that one work? No. Okay, so is 4 6 less than 3 fifths or greater than? Greater than, right? So, it will not work. Okay. All right, make sure you're paying attention, okay? All right, so we're gonna cross that out because our symbol's gonna go with the bigger one is four sixths. Okay, next we have nine fifteenths and three fifths. So 15 times three. 45. Good girl. Five times nine? 45. 45. So these are equivalent, so that means it is not gonna work. So 45 and 45. All right, so the last one is seven twelfths and three fifths. So seven twelfths and three fifths. And we are hoping that this guy is bigger. Okay, so what is 12 times 3? 36. 36. <coughs> and 5 times 7? 35. 35. Since 35 is less than 36, we have it. 7 twelfths is less than 3 fifths. So we have our answer. 35 and 36. Okay, so D is the correct answer. All right. So now you're going to be on the back of this first page. So we're going to be on page two. And if for some reason
reason you get behind and um, aren't able to keep up, up with the writing, I will put it up at the end of math. We're going kind of quick for the, for the benefit of the video, but I will put everything back up at the end. And then, of course, if you're watching the video, you can hit pause, right? Um, okay. Um, number four says list three different fractions that are equivalent to four fifths. So, to find fractions that are equivalent to four fifths, what are the two ways that we've learned to find equivalent fractions? Caitlin? Cross multiply. No. Olivia? No, not comparing. Derek? Divide and multiply. Yes, sir. Multiply or divide, right? All right, so we've learned two ways to do it. The only two numbers we can't multiply or divide by are zero and one and zero. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to write four fifths three times down the side, okay? Four fifths, and write it kind of small, four, and then leave a space, and then another four fifths, and then another four fifths, okay? Now, is there any number that we can divide both 4 and 5 by? Well, let's look at all the factors, because factors are the numbers we can divide a number by, right? What are the first two numbers you can multiply together to get 4? 2. two. Emily? Two. Don't listen to them. Did you know what it was? What's, what, are the, what do we start with when we're doing factors? What's the very first factor of 4? No, that's a multiple. Gentry? One. One times what, Gentry? Four. Four, good work. Four okay. itself. Huh? Four itself. Exactly. All right, so put your tally mark on your paper, Gentry. Remember how we do factors? We do one times the number itself. <coughs> and then, can four be divided by two? Yes. Yes, yes. because it is? A multiple. It's a multiple. Even. even. It is a multiple of two, but it's even, right? So two times two is four, that's it. Those are all the factors that of four. So those are the only numbers you can divide four by and get a whole number answer. Okay, so what are the factors of five? One times five. Good, one times five. Okay, so the only common factor four and five have is what? One. one. And we don't divide by one, right? So, that means we cannot divide on this problem. That's what I'm trying, the point that I'm trying to make by doing all this. The only common factor that four and five share is one. And we don't do dividing by one because that gives us the same answer, not an equivalent answer. So we're gonna put multiplied by, multiplied by, multiplied by, a fraction line, an equal sign, a fraction line. Okay, we're going to set all three of them up like that. Four-fifths times a fraction equals a new fraction. Four-fifths times a fraction equals a new fraction. And four-fifths times a fraction equals a new fraction. And just for simplicity's sake, we're going to do two on the first one, three on the second, four on the third. So we're going to go two and two. 3 and 3, 4 and 4. And now when you multiply fractions like this, you multiply straight across. So 4 times 2 equals 8. eight. eight. And 5 times 2? Ten. Ten. 10. Good work. 4 times 3? 12. And 5 times 3? 15. And 4 times 4? 16. And 5 times 4? Okay, so those three fractions are all equivalent to four-fifths. So four-fifths is equal to eight-tenths, is equal to twelve-fifteenths, is equal to sixteen-twentieths. Okay? On top, what are we counting by? Four. Fours and on bottom? Five. Five. Good, because our very first fraction started with a four on top and a five. Okay. Now we have to see if we agree.
agree with Elena. Elena says that three fifths and six tenths are not equivalent. This is what she says, they're not equivalent because there's twice as many parts in six tenths. Do you agree with Elena? Explain your reasoning. Emily? Uh, no, I do not. You do not agree. Elena is wrong. Okay. So how come you don't agree? Well, because if you um, add three. Multiply by two. Then you'll get six. And if you do it to the top? You get to the bottom. Very good. Okay, so both of these, see how that's the same number on top and bottom? Yeah. Since both of them are doubled the first number, <coughs> then they absolutely are equivalent. So, the question was, do you agree with Elena? No. no. And because... Multiplying the numerator and denominator you can shorten the denominator to denom if you want by the same number means the fractions are equivalent. Another answer that I would take that um, you don't have to write down, but another way that you could have also checked this is to cross multiply. And if we do 5 times 6 is 30, and 10 times 3 is 30, those are equal. So you could say something like, no, I don't agree, because when I cross multiplied, um, the answers were both 30, so I know they're equivalent. Something like that. Zeke, you're not reading right now. No. Okay. <laughs> you're just looking very closely at your multiplication table. All right. Okay. Um, the next one is um, probably the most challenging one. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not that it's challenging. It just takes more work because we're going to be putting fractions in order from the smallest to the biggest. Okay. But I'm... Um, and this is what's going to help us with that. So, um, I'm not going to make you write the big long answer. This time, I'm going to put it up at the end of math. Okay? So, this time, I just, after you finish copying down the answer to number five, just put your pencils down and watch for a minute. <clears throat> All right. So, we have the fractions seven fourths. 7 twelfths, 3 eighths, 13 sixths, and 1 fourth. Now let's read what the directions say. It says list these fractions from smallest to largest and explain how you found the order. Okay, so we need to put these fractions in order from smallest largest. Okay. So, <clears throat> the very first thing that we need to do is get an idea of the size of each of these fractions. <clears throat> and you guys, since you learned about numbers, have been kind of looking at a number and figuring out stuff about it. Like, you know, you see the number seven, you know, it's, it's smaller than 10, for example. 
Um, but when we look at fractions, we have to look at that as parts of a whole, pieces that we've put together. So the first thing we do is, is evaluate each fraction to see whether it is greater than one whole. So if you look at these five fractions, do you see any that are greater than one whole? I'm gonna pull a stick this time. Do you see any fractions that are greater than one whole? Number nine. All right, Emily, do you see any fractions that are bigger than one whole uh, in this list of fractions? Um, what fraction is bigger than one whole? Uh, seven fourths. Seven fourths, good. There's one more, which one is it? And how do you know that those are bigger than one whole? Uh, because of the, because the top number is bigger than one whole. Perfect, yes, you got it. Yes, put your uh, tally mark down. So we have two fractions that are bigger than a whole, right? <coughs> now we need to compare them to one half. So let's start with this one. What is half of 12? Olivia? Six. Six. So is this fraction seven greater than or less than six? Greater than. Greater than. So it's greater than half, right? So we're going to put a plus sign about this for greater than half. Okay? What is half of eight? Derek? Four. Four. So is this fraction greater than half or less than half? Less than half. Good work. Yes. So put your tally mark down, Derek. And Jackson, what is half of four? Two. So is this fraction greater than half or less than half? Less. Less than. Okay, let's look at our results. We have two fractions that are smaller than half, one fraction that is bigger than half, and two fractions that are more than one whole, okay? So we know that our first two, our smallest, are going to be the two that are what? Less than half, right? So those are going to be the two that are less. Um, so now we've got this one's less than half, this one's less than half. How do we tell which is smaller, Chevy? Um, because... Uh, Okay, how can you check, Gentry? On the top and the bottom. Uh-huh. Four times three. So you can cross multiply, is that what you're doing? Okay, you're right, Gentry, you can cross multiply. And we're gonna cross multiply these two. Three eighths and one fourth. Okay, so Gentry, you said four times three is what? Twelve. Twelve? And then what's eight times one? Eight. Eight. So 12 is bigger than eight, right? Mm -hmm. So that means that three eighths is bigger. So what is our very smallest fraction? Yeah. Emma, what's our very smallest fraction? Put your arms in your sleeves. Okay, so if we found out, Emma, that these two fractions are smaller than half, right? So these are our little ones. And then we did this and found out which is the little, little one. So which is the little, little one? Yes. So our smallest will be one fourth. And then what's our next smallest? Olivia H. Exactly right. Good work. Okay, so we've got one fourth is gone now, three eighths is gone now. So that leaves us with three fractions. Okay, we've got one that's greater than half and two that are greater than one whole. What do you think comes next, Elena? Seven twelfths, right? Because it's greater than half. 
but not as big as one hole, right? Good work. You can put your towel mark down. And Olivia H., did I tell you put a towel mark down? Okay. Okay, perfect. And then that leaves us with our two fractions that are bigger than one hole. How are we going to decide which to put here and which to put here? Corbin? Cross multiply. Cross multiply. Yes, Corbin. So put your tally mark down. So I'm going to come over here and I'm doing 7 fourths and 13 sixths, right? Now, whichever one is bigger is going to be our biggest fraction, right? Okay, you with me on that? Okay, so 13 times 4. Anybody figure that out? 52. 52. And 6 times 7? 42. 42. So 42 is less than 52. So 7 fourths is less than 13 6. So what goes here? 7 fourths. And then our biggest one is 13 6. And that makes sense because 13 sixth size parts is going to actually be more than two holes, isn't it? Because if 6 6 makes one hole, then 12 6 would make two holes. And we still got another six size part on top of that. Okay. All right. So now we're going to put them in order as 1 fourth is less than 3 eighths is less than 7 twelfths, is less than 7 fourths, is less than 13 sixths. Okay, and it wants you to explain how you found the order. So we found the order um, by comparing fractions to one whole and one half and then cross multiply. But I have an explanation that I'm going to share with you um, after we're done so that you can copy it down because it'll take a little bit. We're going to do the last page now. And if you didn't quite get that copied down, I'll put it back up at the end. Okay. <clears throat> now, since for each fraction, write an equivalent fraction with the given denominator. So we're finding equivalent fractions, which we know that we can multiply to get those, right? Mm -hmm. So page three we're on. Okay, so one half equals a certain number of twelfths. You can do this a couple of different ways. You can actually use cross multiplying kind of, okay? So what do you multiply 12 times to get, or 12 times 1 is what? 12. 12. What do you multiply 2 times to get 12? 6. Okay? So you can fill it in that way, or you can do it the way we originally learned, where you say, I know that to get from 2 to 12, I times by 6. And if you do it to the bottom, you do it to the top. So that means that we're going to multiply 1 times 6, and that is 6. So what do you multiply 3 times to get 24? 8. 8. And if you do it to the bottom, you do it to the top. So what is 8 times 2? 16. Good. Okay. What do you multiply five times to get 35? Seven. Seven. And if you do it to the bottom, you, you do, do it, it to the top. So what is six times seven? 42. 42. Okay. And what do you multiply seven times to get 28? Four. Four. And if you do it to the bottom, you, you do, do it to the top. top. So what's five times four? 20. 20. <coughs> And what do you multiply 8 times to get 32? 4. 4. And if you do it to the bottom, you do it to the top. And what is 7 times 4? 28. 28. Okay? All right. Um, we're wrapping it up here. It says Noah and Lynn drew different geometric designs 
on the same size rectangular paper and color the designs. Four tenths of Noah's design is blue. How can you describe the size of the fraction? fraction? So this is Noah's design and we know four tenths is blue. So it's rectangular paper. If I were gonna recreate Noah's design, how many sections should I break this into, Tinley? Ten. Ten, good work, Kenley. All right, get yourself um, a tally mark. Okay, I need to break this into 10. Okay, 10 sections, right? And how many would be blue, Dexter? Four. Four, good. Okay, so we don't have to draw the model for Noah's. We're gonna have to do it for uh, Lens though here in a minute. But how can we describe this? Noah's design has 10 sections and four out of the 10 are blue. Noah's design, copy this down, has 10 sections and four out of The main purpose of that question is just they want to make sure that you understand exactly what four tenths means when that's written. What does that mean? So, and now we've got Lynn, and it says five out of 12 of Lynn's design is blue. Sketch an example. So here's what I'm gonna do to make this. I'm gonna draw a line right down the middle. And then I'm gonna draw another line down the middle. And then each of those, <coughs> each of these are gonna get split with a line about where my fingers are. So there's gonna be a total of three sections on this side and three sections on this side. So I need to draw two more lines. Let me draw that down. Put that down. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. And the goal is to have uh, Twelve sections total, and as close to even sections as possible. That, that's not bad. Okay. All right. And now, how many of those do we shade blue? Five. Dexter. Five. Five. And I am. Um, want you to shade it like I'm shading it because it's easier to see that this is less than half. So we're going to shade the, the top or five of the ones on top only. So um, in the last one of the other classes today, I went back and forth and did um, three on top and uh, two on bottom. But I think it's easier to see that this is less than half if you do it like this, okay? <clears throat> Did you do um, the video with the other classes? No. <sighs> okay. Now, the last question. Whose design has more blue, Noah's or Lynn's? Explain your reasoning. How can we figure out? Corbin? Yes! That's Corbin, you and that cross multiplying, you got that down, don't you? All right, good work. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna compare Noah, what was his fraction? Four, ten. Four ten. And then Lynn, what was... Uh, her fraction, 5 twelfths. So if we cross multiply, 5 times 10 is 50, and 12 times 4 is 
I'll make sure. Okay. Um, and then I've got um, the long answer I'm going to get up here for the um, for number six on page two. Let me get that. Um, stay seated. Did everybody get this copy down? Yes. Okay. No. All right. We've got about five more seconds. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put this up here. All right. If you didn't get it, I'll put the other one up in a minute. So here we go. So on the, on the long one that we had to do, First of all, I want, um, I did the little, ma or the, like the key of what my symbols mean over here. So the star was greater than one, the plus was greater than half, the minus less than one, and the equal sign equal to half. And then I marked them all. And there's cross multiplying when I was deciding which is the biggest was the biggest or which of the bigger two was the biggest, and here's where I cross multiply to find which of the smallest was, or which of the smaller two was smallest. And it says first I compare them to one whole, which means the bigger number is on top. Then to the benchmark one half. Next I cross multiply to see which fraction greater than one whole was the biggest, and which fraction less than half was the smallest. Last, I arranged them smallest to largest. So it looks like a lot, but it's just three sentences. Um, and so I'll let you guys get that copied down and then we will be finished.